1558 October 5, 2587, 8734 680 65 12. Got your whistle? asked Gabriel. Yep, replied Pista, showing it to Gabriel. The whistle was attached to an elastic cord that in turn was firmly rooted to her belt. Bells? asked Gabriel. Pista jingled the bells on her dress. These were meant to alert anything around them of their presence. That way, nothing would be startled by their sudden appearance and charge. Water and snacks? asked Gabriel. Pista patted the bags on her waist, saying, Check, check, check. If I tried to do that, we would have been here for half an hour, Nish commented. Yeah, but I ripped a crocodile bear's jaw off. It gives me a bit more oomph, Gabriel explained, double-checking his backpack. Perhaps it was a bit of an overreaction, considering this was a long but unarduous hike. Their guide, a sizable quadrupedal man with a face full of tentacles, his back had a small sail, used as a display structure and a defense mechanism to make himself appear bigger than he was. It seemed somewhat unnecessary, considering he was as big as a white rhino. The skin was coarse and scaly, giving the gentleman a rugged and tank-like quality, as though he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any other life-form in the galaxy. Please, Mr. Ratlu, I'm squeamish, Karuja said, his tentacle making an undulating motion. Sorry, don't know what came over me, Gabriel replied, and he meant it. He had rarely thought about the events of that day because although most people assumed Gabriel had effortlessly beaten his opponents, he knew he had escaped by the skin of his teeth. Karuja was one of those people. He had literally gone weak in the knees when it was confirmed that Gabriel was indeed the same as the one he had heard on the news. It was an understandable reaction, as they were now on a whole other continent than Reshu City. Roughly the size of India, though it was shaped like a starfish with three arms. The continent of Kyolespi was located in the northern hemisphere. While the climate of Minagarad varied little, at least compared to Earth, it was just high enough that the environment was temperate compared to the South's Mediterranean. Gabriel welcomed the drop in temperature. While his suit had a cooling system, it could still get pretty toasty inside this thing. Now if you would follow me, I will show you our route, Karuja said. Karuja led them into a small log cabin. On the wall was a map of the surrounding area, with a long route that winded around the park. The first leg of our journey will take us over the Eholunto Wolds, then we will take a break to eat our dinner, Karuja explained, tracing one of his tentacles over the route. Drink in my case, pointed out Gabriel. We are well aware you cannot eat, Gabriel, and we're very grateful for bringing us here, Risotti said. Will you just let me whinge? It's important for my psychological well-being, Gabriel retorted, and Risotti snorted in response. Gabriel also smiled. You know, I'm wondering if I should have waited another month and bought the suit with the airlock thing so I could still eat solid foods, he added, pointing at his face. Then you would have never met us, and Pista would not be here, Nish countered, holding her daughter close. I hate to interrupt, but this information is important and we can't leave until you've heard it. Kuruja explained as calmly as possible, barely raising his voice. From his reaction, you would not believe he hated being interrupted, and this was not just a problem due to the species barrier. Even other Lohyo could not tell. Of course, Mr. Ratlu was the real deal, and he was willing to give the man more leeway than most. You are right, I apologize, please continue, Gabriel replied, gesturing with his hands to say Kuruja had his full attention. Kuruja was glad to hear it, there had been a slight niggle in his mind that Mr. Ratlu would simply ignore everything he had to say. Gabriel's encounter with the Vitoru and Carnadon making him arrogant. However, that did not seem to be the case, and Mr. Ratlu seemed to embody humility. Thank you. After we have obtained nutrients, we will make our way to the Oblek coast and walk along the seafront before arriving at the nesting colonies, Karuja explained. Colonies of what? asked Gabriel. Good question. Dozens of species make the cliffs, columns and beaches of the Metadolu Sea as a breeding ground, Karuja replied. After that, we will follow the trail south into the temperate rainforests. I am well aware that Tufanda do not do so well in heavy rain, and ponchos will be provided. We will then camp at a campsite in Jerul's Glade. The campsite has full toilet facilities, Karuja added. Yes, Gabriel said, pumping his arm. 
he had been worried that they would be broken when they arrived. After daybreak and breakfast, we will head east into the continent's interior, moving through the great interior meadows. Then shortly before dusk, we should reach the Portul cave system, and we will spend our final night there, before making our way west and ending the hike in the small village of Volotri, Kuruja finished, bringing their tentacle back to their face. Any questions? asked Kuruja. How rainy is this rainforest? inquired Nish. It will rain at least twice a day, but the ponchos are damn good. We've had Tufanda on the trail before, and they were impressed by how dry they remained, Kuruja replied. Are there any big scary animals on the path? asked Pista, finding her confidence once again. Kuruja crouched and replied, Some of the animals can be quite angry if you get too close, but we will be fine as long as we stay on the path and give them plenty of space. There are no big predators in this part of the park. An exaggeration to be sure, but if it kept the girl calm, it was fine. Hypercarnivores were rare on habitable worlds. While obligate carnivores, animals that needed meat or would die, were utterly unheard of. Even the Carnadon and Vitoru supplemented their diets with fruits and could hypothetically survive on an all-vegetarian diet. Getting a Carnadon to do that, however, was another matter entirely. There is a blue trail on the map. What's that? asked Gabriel, pointing at the route. That is the public path. We'll be taking a longer but more exclusive route, explained Kuruja. Isn't that a bit unfair, only allowing people to pay to see certain sites, said Risotti. You're not wrong, but you need to consider that if hundreds of people walk along a trail daily, they will damage it, either on purpose or by accident, explained Kuruja. Ain't that the truth, Gabriel commented, recalling wildlife trusts and environmental groups begging tourists not to take rocks and scratch their names onto heritage sites back on Earth. Sure, one person doing this would have no impact in the grand scheme of things, but if thousands of people all have the same idea, then the issue occurs. A couple more questions were asked about the biggest incline, and if there were any narrow ledges, but the trail was very gentle, and their concerns were unfounded. So, how long have you been a tour guide? asked Risotti, looking away from a group of chole grazing on the heather-like plants that dominated the wolds. Twenty years now, and the Creator willing, I will be doing it for another eighty more, Kuruja replied, holding a pair of binoculars with his tentacles. Kuruja looked over at Gabriel, currently playing with Pista, chasing her up and down the trail. It must be quite something to be friends with Mr. Ratlu, he commented before looking at Risotti. Yes, my girlfriend met him while they were in hospital, and things just grew from there, Risotti said, watching Gabriel, who finally caught Pista and lifted her into the air. What's he like, you know? In private, Kuruja asked, looking away, worried that giving any attention to him would let Gabriel know they were talking about him. Reserved, but he has his moments, Risotti replied. I take it you're a fan. That obvious? asked Kuruja raising three of his tentacles and swaying slightly. I was nervous too, Risotti offered. Quite the juxtaposition, isn't it? He went claw to claw with those animals, and there he is pretending to be beaten up by Pista. Risotti pointed, and there Gabriel was, begging Nish for help to save him from the gremlin. No one present but Gabriel knew what a gremlin was, but they could make a good guess. If it weren't for the different body shapes, you would think they really were father and daughter, Kuruja noted. Risotti did not reply, but she did agree. Checking the time, Kuruja realized if they did not get a move on, they would arrive at camp after dark, and that was a hazardous scenario, 